Hi guys, welcome to a new video. So as you guys know, the CW boss network that airs Supernatural has always said for years that as long as J2 want to continue making the show and ratings hold, he's gonna keep the show on the network. Ratings have been holding. J2 decided to end the show next season, season 50, unfortunately. So he is actually a big fan himself, Mark Bedowitz, uh, CW boss. So he was also heartbroken about it coming to an end and he talks about it in a new interview here how it was a long and drawn out conversation between him and the boys about the decision to end the show and he talks a little bit more details about what they told him in that discussion and he also talks about the spin-off why he's not convinced of it which i've discussed in a previous video before and most importantly he talks about if the boys ever change their mind if we can convince them to come back he's open to let them back anytime he says this kind of jokingly in the interview but we all know he actually means it because he is a big fan of the show and uh, yeah, that's really great news if the boys ever change their minds and want to come back for a limited series run. If you want to do like a short season, whatever, in the future after taking a long break. CW Boss will welcome them with open arms. Hopefully he stays in the network. He's a big, big fan of Supernatural and J2. And he'll always welcome them back as we're going to read in that interview. As you guys seen in my previous videos, Jensen seems to be having second thoughts about the ending of the show this soon in season 15 and he might actually change his mind in the future he talked about leaving the door open at the end of season 15 for a potential future movie in the future or maybe a, a serious comeback we're not sure exactly yet but everything is open at this point after the series ends we never know if they will come back at some point or not but we do know that they are kind of open to coming back based on the new interviews i discussed in my previous videos from j2 particularly from Jensen who seems to be regretting his decision to end the show the most. So it's good to know that CW Boss is open for them if they ever change their mind. They can come back anytime and obviously we'll all be very happy with that. So let's read this new article together with the interview with the CW Boss by Entertainment Weekly and talk about it. CW Boss discusses why season 15 was a time to end Supernatural. CW President Mark Pedowitz has said for years that Supernatural would end when stars Jared Padalecki and Jensen Eccles wanted it to. And with an announcement back in March that season 15 would be the show's last, Pedowitz stuck to his plan. As I was saying, he's a big advocate of the show and uh, the boys decided to end it and he just had to, to accept their decision, of course. During the 2019 Television Critics Association press tour, Pedowitz took the stage and answered questions about the decision to wrap the long-running sci-fi series. At which point he revealed that he had a, quote, very, very long, sad, heartbreaking discussion with stars Pedalecki and Eccles, as well as Warner Brothers television president Peter Roth. We all came to understand what the guys wanted to do. Pedowitz said, explaining that Eccles and Pedalecki wanted to go out while the show was still relevant. Additionally, Pedowitz cited spending time with their families and seeing what else was out in the world, as the guys' reasons for ending the show. Pedowitz then jokingly added, if you can convince him to come back, I'm open. I mean, the article says jokingly added, but joking doesn't mean it's not true. Uh, he is a big fan of the show, obviously, like I was saying, and I'm pretty sure he means it, that he is very open when the guys, if they decide to change their minds, he's open to welcome them back. So that is great. The guy is still a big fan of the guys and the show, and uh, that, that's never going to change in the future. If they want to come back, door is very much open. When asked about future Supernatural spin-offs, Bedouet said, I've been involved in two spin-offs that did not connect. We have had no further discussions with Supernatural EP Bobby Singer. We have had no further discussions whatsoever in terms of Supernatural spin-offs. I tend to believe at this point that the show's essence and blood is Jared and Jensen. I mean, I've believed that since season one, pretty much, that the boys make the show. Anything happens, like when the boys are separated, like they've been separated a lot in the recent season, the show's quality significantly dips. Evidently, when the boys connect and we have these dramatic scenes, like I believe in us, epic scene in season 14, this was the best television really you can watch at any point. The boys are just great actors, they have great chemistry. I believe in us scene was very hard for Jerry to film, as he revealed in a recent convention. And that shows, and he really deserves like all the awards for that amazing, uh, performance in that scene. Jensen always gets a praise for all his dramatic scenes, crying scenes, but Jared killed the season, particularly in that big scene, I believe in us scene. So I totally agree with CW Boss that the show is the boys. Anything else just doesn't have a soul and no one really cares about it, at least most people, including myself. I did not care for Witch Sisters or Bloodlines from early on. 
I wouldn't have really watched what's gonna happen later because I wasn't hooked from the backdoor pilots you tried to solve into Supernatural. Wasn't really interested and uh, yeah, CW boss totally agrees with me here. So again, uh, the guy is very much a big fan like I was saying, CW boss, he's very open to our turn. And he said he had a very long and sad discussion with the boys about ending the show and was Warner Brothers president. And um, I don't think he wanted it to end either as much as I didn't want it to end as much as most fans didn't want it to end. So obviously it comes down to J2 as he always puts a decision in their hands. So that's what they decide for now. Uh, in the future, who knows if they're ever going to change their mind, if they want to make a movie, if a spin-off happens that the CW boss decides to let it go, let it happen and the boys may be featuring it in the future. Nothing is certain right now. All we know is the future looks kind of positive with all the recent interviews by J2 and CW Boss about hopefully a potential return in some form in the future, a limited series run, a movie. I prefer a series obviously because that's more prolonged than just a one-time event in a movie. I would like both of anything like a lot of you guys have been saying in the comments. Obviously ideally we want both but if I have to pick one it's gonna be a limited series run so they have plenty of time to do whatever else they want to do. Even if it's a very short one, like Stranger Things, 8, 9 episodes, or even X-Files Revival Seasons, uh, 8, 9, 10 episodes, that'd be perfect. Obviously, anything is better than nothing. Ultimately, it is in the hands of J2. Whatever they want to do in the future, it's up to them. If they want to come back, obviously, we'll all be very happy with that, including the CW boss. Alright, that's it for today's video guys. What did you think of the news we've been getting recently? What did you think about the future of the show? What the CW boss said in this interview, being open to a comeback in the future? Do you prefer a series run in the future, maybe a limited one, or a movie, or even a spin-off? Let me know down below in the comments. Subscribe for more awesome Sprencher content. Until next time as always, no check flick moments. We will be gone long at this weird decision. And then I'm gonna sell them out. <laughs> when Jensen got to Vancouver two weeks ago, I have a text message from him. He's like, "Man, crazy being back in Vancouver. I feel like we could do two more years." And I was like, "Let's talk, man." Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I believe in us, Dean. I believe in us. Hey, 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 hey. Why don't you believe in us too? But I do believe in us. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. My name is Ashley. I hail from Pennsylvania. Hail. Hail from Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my question was, um, what was it like filming that scene in Profit and Loss, that scene at the end, where you punched Ian in the face? And then pulled the plug. I have to say, that was a very, very, very powerful scene. And you guys are Thank you. Um, there are a few people who would know this from earlier today. Uh, I don't, uh, my experience. So I've done like 360 episodes of television. Um, I've never gone home and cried myself to sleep from shame and disappointment <laughs> until that night. Not a word of lie, and I think he can vouch for me. For some reason, the words wouldn't, it's never happened to me. Like I'm a professional, I'm a craftsman, and I'm very proud of my professionalism. I like to mess around and have fun, but I have never had a moment where literally, like, I can even tell it. I've, I've worked with this guy for thousands of days, right? So he's like, you good, man? You're good. Like, you got it? You got it? And I knew that I was kind of messing up. Um, <clears throat> Tom Wright, like, I literally ran off set when the scene was over. I've never in my life not known, I've never in my life not been able to, to yeah, he, he couldn't, the words and the actions just weren't syncing up. And I, I, again, like he said, I've, I've worked with this guy more than anyone in my life. And I've never seen a moment like this with him. I've seen it in other people. Um, 
but Jerry has never not been able to get the work done. And he couldn't, he couldn't do it. Like, something wasn't connecting in his brain. And so much so where I was like, did you take something? Did you take like, no, like, I mean, did you take some like whole medicine or did, did something you, you eat? Are you having a reaction? Like, it was that weird. And he couldn't, he couldn't make the connection to the words. And so we get into the scene, and it was supposed to be an emotional scene, obviously. And he wasn't able to, A, find the emotion, B, connect the words to the emotion, and then C, connect all that to the action that he was supposed to do, like the, the shoving me and stuff like that. And it was all just, and I just, well, I just watched him, and he was just spiraling. And I tried to grab him and be like, hey, hey, take, take it easy, you got this. What, like, what's happening? You're fine. Go walk it off. And, and nothing was happening. And at that point, I knew nothing that I could say was going to help this situation. It was just kind of like, it, it, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And so everybody, even the crew, I walked back to the crew, and the crew's like, what's happening? Because he's like pacing, you know, in the parking lot, looking at his script and like trying to go over the line. I'm like, I don't know, whatever it is, just, you know, just let, him, let him work through his process. Uh, you know, I was like, you know, are you... Is something going on at home that I don't know about? And he's like, no, nothing, nothing is, I, he's like, I just can't do it. And it was awful for, not just for him, but for everybody there to, to watch somebody who's so solid every day, day in and day out, the guy is a machine. Uh, again, never not able to do the work. And he just couldn't do it. Um, it was, I felt, the same way I did when I saw Rob uh, in the hospital after a stroke, and he couldn't speak. And it was just like, you, you know he can, but it, just, it, couldn't, it couldn't happen. It was just, it was heartbreaking. Luckily, I think some of that frustration, or a lot of that frustration, made its way into the performance, and he finally put in an amazing performance, I thought, that, that hug. And that, that hug at the end uh, was a little more Jensen hugging Jared than it was Dean hugging Sam. Um, so that was, uh, but hey, hey buddy, you made it. And just to be clear, it has never happened since. He's, I don't know, it was, just a, it was just a fluke. It was a unicorn. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bring up all that emotion. No, thank you. No, it's good. Can't tell at all that you were struggling with it, but it, it's like you feel it. Yeah. yeah well, you know what? Um, thanks, Ackles. Um, I'll say this. This is, and people ask me this sometimes, and I can't really elocute like how I, I I can't properly put into words or quantify the way I feel about y'all, about this guy, about these guys and gals. And, um, that was the lowest point in my career, honestly. Like I've never been to work and been like, uh, 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 I knew the words, but I, I, I felt literally like I was just like, this in the joke, like I, like I had a stroke, and it, the words wouldn't come out of my mouth. <clears throat> you did say, you remember saying this, you were like, this is like a bad dream I'm having. I'm, Absolutely. Like, I'm living a bad dream right now. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like and a dream. Like, yeah. Okay, well we have four more hours to go to shoot this scene, and I'm like, I'm having a fucking nightmare. Like, in front of everybody, in front of the crew, they all want to go home. It's midnight. We have, like, we should wrap by 1 a.m., but I don't, I, I can't say my lines, so they're going to be up till 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. waiting for me to do my job. Um, it's never happened before. Never, ever, ever, ever. And it's, it hasn't happened since. Um, it was a nightmare, but the, the, the sheer fact that you're coming up here for the first time since it's aired to, like compliment us on the scene is just the sign of why we are a family, you know? Like this is why, this is why we come here, you know? And, uh, and I Did that feel good to get out? <laughs> no, it's <was> embarrassing. <laughs> Awesome. 
That's awesome. You're awesome.